Hello, Tacoma. Welcome back to your TV classroom. Third graders, today is Monday, March 1st. I'm shocked that we're in March already. Uh, Mr. Kevin, can you believe it? I can't believe it. It's amazing. How are you today, Mr. Kevin? Well, I'm pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, look, it's Mr. Kevin, friends. I'm in the green zone today, and how about you, Mrs. Wally? Well, hmm. You know, I haven't really thought about it. Uh, I'm feeling in mm, the green zone. I'm a little yellow, a little blue. I don't really know why, but I'm just feeling a little anxious today and a little bit tired, but pretty much in the green zone. Yeah, I think I'm ready to go for today. Did something, did something big happen this weekend? Oh my goodness, yes, friends, something big happened. And that might be why I'm still like in the yellowy blue zone. Oliver turned two yesterday. We filmed this on a different day than Monday, than March 1st, because we have to produce our films. And so yesterday was Oliver's second birthday. And he had a great day, but as a mom, it's, Really exciting to see your kids get older, but it's also kind of sad to see them grow up. So, yeah. And he's starting to talk in sentences all of a sudden, and it's really cute. So, yes, I did have a big thing happen yesterday. Mrs. Wally, he will be forever two in your heart. He will, but he's growing up. He's just, he's getting big and has his own opinions and wants to do his own things now. And so it's a big change in our house, which is okay. So my, friends, my son. Oh, I was just go ahead. Say, my son is 20. Yeah, I and I feel like I'll be there soon, even though he's only two. I hear it goes really fast. So it, it does. Okay. All right, friends, it's Make It Monday. Let's take a look at the number we're going to make together today. OK, how would you make the number 1050? What would you do? <laughs> We need hmm. to get it up on the screen first, don't we? Yeah, we do, but it's okay. I just gave him the number. It gives him time to think. How could we make that number? Right, we could do expanded form, which would be... Hang on, friends. I had my pen ready, and then now I don't. 1,000 plus 50. That would work. I don't know what is going on with my computer, but, you know, it's that kind of day, friends. We're having a very weird technology day. What's another way we could make 1,050? Hmm. Well, if I took 1,000 and split it in half, that would be 500. And if I took 50 and split it in half, that would be 25. So 525 times two. Ooh, Mr. Kevin, can you think of one? Hmm. So I was thinking about and you know where I come from. Oh, yes. I love subtraction. You do love so subtraction. What if we started with 1,100? Ooh, 1,100. How much would we need to subtract to take away 1,100 to get to 1,050? Hmm. Oh, we take away 50. Oh, my computer's getting warm. I'm going to move it like this so it can. There we go. Now it can get nice and cool. All right, let's look at our next number. Hmm, 1,080, how might we make that? Okay, 1,000 plus 80. Man, I'm gonna write that correctly. I didn't like how that looked. Mr. Kevin, I'm gonna have you pull up my whiteboard. That's gonna be easier to write on. Friends, we're gonna do it on the whiteboard so you can see it better. So we could do 1,000 plus 80. We could do what if we divided this into four groups? If 1,000 divided into two groups is 500, what's 1,000 divided into four groups? Yeah, 250. Plus what's 80 divided into four groups? Two, four, six, eight, plus 20. So that would be 270 times what? We split everything into four groups. So 270 times Four equals 1,080. Hmm. What about, what if I had 1,100 again? What would I need to take away this time to get to 
1,080. What about 1,100? How many hops backwards on the number line gets me to 1,080? Yeah, Rafa, 20, because if I'm at 1,100 and I go back 10, that's 1,090, and then 1,080, that's 20. That's going to equal 1,080. You may have found some other ways, and I would love it if you sent them to us here at the TV Classroom. Today we are learning to solve two-step problems involving two different operations. We've been working on this. Let's look at our warm-up problem. It says, write an equation you could use to solve this problem. Use t for the unknown number. So we're just writing the equation. We're not gonna actually solve the problem. John wants to collect 24 trading cards. He has 15 cards. How many more trading cards does he need? What's our question that we're answering here? Yeah, how many more trading cards does he need? Okay, what information do we know? John wants to collect 24 trading cards. He has 15 cards. So we know he wants 24 and he has 15. On your whiteboard, I'd like you to do a number bond and an equation. Would you like me to show your? Yeah, you can. Putting the information in our number, number bond that you know and a T for the part that you need to figure out and then write an equation below. I'm gonna give you one minute. Are you ready? Go. Mr. Kevin, how long have we been going for? Seven and a half minutes. Thank you. Okay, friends, here is what we're going to do. First of all, what do we know? We, we know that he wants 24 cards in all. We know that he has 15 cards. Oh, well, how do you write an equation like this? He has 24 cards. He already has 15 cards. How many more does he need to collect? There's your equation. 24 equals 15 plus t. You could also write 24 minus 15 equals t. That will also get you the answer. Either way works. All right, let's look at this full screen, Mr. Kevin, because they're going to do some solving after we do a three read. And then we're going to use the PowerPoint because it's going to walk us through some of the ways they've done it. So I won't need my whiteboard for a while. Third, third graders at Brown Elementary School are raising money for the school library. The goal is to raise $250. They raise $9 each day for eight days in a row. How much more money, M, is needed to reach the goal? To solve this problem, write an equation for each step or write one equation that includes both steps. It's a lot to think about in this problem. So, what are we trying to figure out? Let's read again. Well, first of all, let's talk about what's happening here. And I'm going to do a little bar model down below when we talk about what's happening. So what's going on? Yeah, we know there's a school that wants to raise money for their library, a total amount of money. And they have a goal, right? And we know that for eight days in a row, they raise the same amount of money, right? So I'm going to do this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's the eight days in a row. And then I have this here. I know that there's going to be a total amount. Okay, so now I have a bar model to show. 
Okay, let's read and find the question and figure out where we're gonna put the question mark. Third graders at Brown Elementary School are raising money for the school library. Make sure that you have this bar model drawn on your whiteboard. The goal is to raise $250. They raise nine each day for eight days in a row. How much more money is needed to reach the goal? So what is the question we're trying to answer? Yeah, how much more money do we need? How much more money is needed to reach the goal? And they said to use the letter M. So where would we put this M? Would we put it for the total amount, the amount they, wrote, they raised for the eight days, or in the part that's left to raise? Yeah, we would put it here because this is the part that's showing how much more money they need. Let's put the rest of our information in. Let's read again. Third graders at Brown Elementary School are raising money for the school library. The goal is to raise $250. That's something we need to know. The goal is 250. They raise nine each day for eight days in a row. Huh, they raise nine each day for eight days in a row. So? On your whiteboard, what you're gonna do for the next two minutes is fill in the rest of the information on the bar model and write the equations to solve the problem. Go ahead, you have two minutes. All right, friends, let's take a look at one way you could have solved this problem. You can use a diagram to show the two-step word problem. So that's what I had you do in the bar model. We put M in the part that was left to raise. They put $9 in each of the eight days, and then they had 250 for the total goal of money to raise. M is gonna tell them how much money they need left to raise. Now, what equations did you use to solve this? What were the two steps you had to figure out? Turn and tell your learning buddy or someone there with you, what were the two steps you needed to do to figure this problem out? Let's take a look at what they suggest. It says use that diagram, so we're gonna keep going back and forth to help write an equation for a two-step word problem. The students raise $9 each day for eight days. So they have raised eight times $9 right here. This is what shows that, right here, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups of nine. So we can say eight times nine, and that's gonna give us that information there. 
equals that part, how much they've already raised. They need a total of $250. They need to raise M more dollars, which we don't know yet. The amount already raised plus M should equal 250. So how could we do that in an equation? We could do 800 times nine equals something, and then something plus M equals 250. That's one way you could write it, or you could do it like this. Hmm. So that's another way we could write the equation. Look, they have it right there. Eight times nine in parentheses plus M equals 250. Okay, well looking at that, they did, what operation did they do first? They multiplied first, why did they multiply first? Think about it, what do we have to figure out before we can figure out M? Yeah, we gotta figure out what all those nines make. So they did eight times nine, which was 72, plus M equals 250, right here. So we said we need to multiply first. Why? Because we have to figure that part out first. How can we find the unknown M? What strategy did you use? Okay, I'm hearing some people say I subtracted 250 minus 72, and I heard some people say I used an open number line. Why can we subtract? Right, when we have a missing add-end problem, we know the whole and a part, and to find the other part, you can subtract. So what is seven, 250 minus 72? Well, what's 250 minus 50? That would be 200. And then what's 200 minus 20? That would be 180. And then what would 180 minus two be? 178. We check that by adding it together. Eight plus two is 10. Seven plus seven is seven tens and seven tens is 140. And then 100, that makes 100, 250. Perfect. So M tells us how many more dollars they need to raise. What's her answer? They need to raise 178 more dollars. Now friends, there's more to do. There's another problem, but we've run out of time. So our next lesson, we will finish these problems. You don't have an assignment today, lucky you. We, today we were starting to learn to solve two-step problems involving two different operations. We created a model, we wrote equations, and we chose a strategy. And we found a solution. So we did our job, but we only did it on one problem. We're gonna dig deeper tomorrow. So Mr. Kevin, can you tell them how to send us ways to make those numbers at the TV classroom? Sure, if you want to uh, uh, send us uh, ways to make those numbers or if you have a question. Mm -hmm. You know the TV teachers are always available to help. They'd love to answer and they will. TV classroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us or you can mail us anything mm -hmm. you'd like and we'll hang it on the wall here. Uh, TV classroom 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington. 98405. Thank you so much, Mr. Kevin. Now, friends, it's going to be your break time, and then Ms. Oslin will be here to teach your ELA lesson. Make sure during your break you gather all of your ELA materials and be back ready to learn when she shows up on the screen. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Rules. One, you have 10 seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. 
Three, you will get 10 points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Five, see how many points you can get. Good luck.
Hi, third graders. Welcome back from your break. I heard that we might have some new friends joining us here in our TV classroom this week. How exciting for us. If there are some of you who are new, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Mrs. Oslin, and I've been teaching here in Tacoma for 10 years. And this year, I've had the honor and the privilege of being a TV teacher, which means I teach these lessons on television every day for our kindergarten through third grade friends to watch. Now, we're going to do some really important thinking this week about what it means to be an independent learner, because you might be returning to learning with your teacher a couple days a week this week. So we need to do some more thinking about what does it look like when you're in front of your teacher? What does it look like when you need to be independent? What does it look like when you're watching my videos or my, me on television? So I see that some of you gathered your materials. You should have a pencil, your reading notebook, and a learning buddy. And we, when we say a learning buddy, this is if there's no one in the room with you, you're truly by yourself, you could have a stuffed animal with you that you can talk to, to practice those important speaking skills that we're gonna be practicing. I have a picture of Rafa, and then I have Rafa real life right here. So Rafa is my third grade learning buddy that I get to model what it looks like to talk to your learning buddy. Now. Today and every day when we come together, we agree to show respect, make good decisions, and solve problems. And those three personal standards are really important so that everyone feels safe thinking and speaking so that we can all grow as readers and writers. Now today, we are learning that strong independent learning habits help me grow as a reader and a writer. What that means is that you're gonna do things, your habits, your behaviors, every day when you're learning by yourself. And when those habits are really strong, you know them really well, you grow as a reader and a writer. Now, I want you to think about what does it mean to be a strong, independent learner? What do you do when you're a strong, independent learner? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking and I will model what that looks like. Rafa, I'm thinking about how strong independent learning habits mean that I have my materials, I have my space, also, when I'm actually reading and writing, I'm making connections, I'm making sure that I understand what I read. When I'm writing, I'm making sure that my writing is really clear and has um, some good language, strong language, so that my reader can really understand the point that I'm trying to make. Now, you might have had a different idea about what strong independent learning habits are, and that's okay. Keep thinking about them and what areas of opportunity you have as a reader and a writer to improve. Now, one of the things I mentioned was making sure that you have a good, strong, independent workspace. And I'm kind of chuckling inside right now because we just changed what my independent workspace looks like. It doesn't look like this anymore, but it's still a good workspace for me because I have all my materials, there's plenty of light, I can see what it is I'm trying to do, and it's comfortable. I have a nice comfortable chair. So as a reader and as a writer, one of the independent work habits that you are going to improve is making sure that you have good workspace for you. Now, you might not be comfortable sitting in a chair at a table when you're reading and writing. You might need to lie down on the floor. You might need to sit on a couch or in a beanbag chair. You need to think about what works for you as a learner. Mr. Kevin? Yes, uh, here's a picture of your new uh, work area. It's very similar to the old one. Oh! Thanks, Mr. Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can your... see it's a little bit different, but it is very similar. I still have my materials. I still have my comfy chair with my jacket just kind of thrown over the back there. But 
it really helps me focus as a learner. Thank you for that, Mr. Kevin. You bet. So third graders, your workspace needs to be comfortable. It needs to have plenty of light and you need to have your materials. So for your work today, if you did not have an opportunity to gather your reading notebook and a pencil, I am going to give you a moment to safely go grab those and get comfortable in your workspace so that we can learn together. Go ahead. Most of us are ready. I grabbed my reading notebook too so that I could be prepared for our lesson. And I have, um, I use a pen just so that it's easier for you to see, but you would use a pencil so that if you make mistakes, you can erase. So we're ready to go. We are going to work today thinking about as we read a book, this is another strong independent work habit, is to make connections with what it is that we're reading. That's when you pay really close attention to as you're reading, what does it make me think about? What does it make me feel? Does it remind me of something in my life? We call that a text to self connection. Does it remind me of another book or show that I've seen? We would call that a text to text connection. We're gonna practice doing that today. And this graphic organizer called Making Connections, uh, we could use it. I don't have it though. And I don't know that you have it. If you do have it, you can use it. If not, just use your reading notebook. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, Mr. Kevin, we have a really fun book to read today. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's called The Plot Chickens by Mary Jane and Herm O. And it's funny because when we're reading a text and the plot, what happens in the story gets really complicated or there's a twist, something changes that you didn't expect. We say the plot thickens, right? But this book is called The Plot Chickens. <laughs> this is a book that's going to teach us the different stages for being a writer. They're gonna call them the rules for writing. And the story behind it is that there's a chicken who's writing a story with the help of her aunts, the other hens. Are you ready? The plot chickens. Henrietta loved to read. Soon she had read every book on the farm a dozen times, so she went to town to find more. When she spotted people carrying books out of the library, she went inside to wait in line. Pay close attention. What does this story make you thinking about or make you feel as we read? When it was Henrietta's turn, the librarian said, we have nothing for chickens here. Try the feed store. Frustrated, Henrietta clucked at the top of her lungs. Buck, buck, buck. Well, why didn't you say so? The librarian handed her three books. Henrietta was in reading ecstasy. Every day she read to her aunts, then returned the books to the library for more. And our aunts' names are Marissa, Golda, and Liz. One day Henrietta said, reading books is so much fun. Writing books must be exhilarating. She searched the shelves until she found a book about writing. The librarian was impressed. When she got home, Henrietta read, rule one, you need a main character. That's me, Aunt Golda. I'm the main character here. The character should be interesting. That's me. No me. Let's take a, some think time right now. Check in with your brain. What is your brain thinking about right now? What connections are you making? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what connection you're making. 
Rafa, this is reminding me so much of when Mr. Oslin and I had chickens in our backyard that we raised, and they really would like run around and cluck at each other, much like I'm picturing the ants doing right now, where they all think that they should be the main character because they're the most interesting. And Mrs. Oslin? Yes, Mr. Kevin. So it made me think that um, when that chicken goes into the library, yes. And she's looking for a book to yes. read, probably just winging it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kevin. She probably is just winging it. Now, in my reading notebook, I am going to show you how I'm going to write my text to self connection about when I raised chickens and how they would often cluck at each other, just like these hens are doing. And you can also do this along with me because hopefully you gathered your materials. Write down in your reading notebook what connection you are making. Now, readers, when we make connections with a text that we're reading, it helps us better remember and understand what we're reading because we're connecting it to something that we already know about, something about our lives or connecting it with another text that we know. Let's keep reading to see what happens. I hope the plot chickens. Aunt Golda won because she was the oldest. Henrietta found a typewriter and began to peck out a story. Once upon a time, there was a hen named Aunt Golda. Rule two, you need to hatch a plot. <laughs> a plot of land? No, plot is what happens in the story. It starts with rule three. Give your main character a problem. I don't want any problems. Me neither. No way. Then I'll make up a character. Once upon a time, there was a hen named Maxine. Rule four, develop your plot by asking, what if? What if Maxine goes into the woods alone? Her mother should tell her that's dangerous. Maxine went walking alone through the woods, even though her mother told her it was dangerous. Something bad will happen. A wolf might be following her. Suddenly, Maxine saw a wolf following her down the path. Then the wolf catches Maxine. The end, good story. Maxine can't be caught. She must save herself. What if she shoots the wolf with a cyberspace ray gun? The wolf is toast. The end, good story. Let's do some checking in about what connections you might be making. I'm making a couple different connections right now. I'm gonna give you some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rafa, I'm making two text-to-text -text connections. This is reminding me a lot of Little Red Riding Hood, right? She goes through the forest and then there's a wolf. Different versions of that story. The other connection that I'm making is I'm thinking about this aunt who keeps saying, then the wolf catches Maxine, the end, good story. And then she tried to end it again. This reminds me of another book that we've read here in TV Classroom. Do you know what I'm going to say, Mr. Kevin? I sure do. What story is it? I can't remember the title. <laughs> Interrupting Chicken. Interrupting Chicken. <laughs> Interrupting Chicken was all about a chicken who kept changing the end of the story because they didn't like how it was ending. So in my writing, reading and writing notebook, I am gonna write the connections that I am making and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to write the connections that you are making.
and everybody lived happily ever after the end. <laughs> That is exactly what interesting chicken sounds like. Now that we've made these connections with another text, we're better able to remember and understand this story because our brain can connect it to something we know really well. Okay, we're gonna keep reading. Pay close attention to what connections you are making. What is this book making you think of? Is it reminding you of something? That's silly. Hens don't have guns. Rule five, write what you know. What if she hides? We hide from hawks every day. Maxine hid under a bush. Then the wolf gets bored and leaves. The end, good story. He can't leave yet. Rule six, build suspense. Build a fence? Suspense to make the reader worry. The wolf sniffed. I smell a delicious young hen nearby. He started creeping toward Maxine's hiding place. Then he eats her. The end. Good story. Gosh, I hope this book is almost over just for the sake of this poor hen. Not yet. Rule seven. Make your story come alive by using all five senses. Maxine heard the wolf growl and he came closer. She saw his sharp teeth and smelled his wolfy body odor. When he was nearer still, she felt the heat of his icky breath. When he stuck his head through the leaves, Maxine tasted the bile rising from her gizzard. Then Maxine dies of fright. The end. Good story. That is not the end. Endings are the hardest part. Maxine's mother swoops in to save her in the nick of time. No, rule eight, the main character must solve her or his or their problem. Maxine gathered her courage. Then she plunged her sharp beak into the tip of the wolf's tender nose. The wolf howled in pain, ran off, never to be seen again. The end. Good story. It's not a good story, it's a great story. Now I'll revise it until it's perfect, then send it to a publisher. Many, many, many months later, the publisher sent a rejection letter. The aunts were devastated, but Henrietta vowed not to brood over her rejection. I'll make my own books. When her books were finished, Henrietta gave one to the librarian. Your book should be reviewed, the librarian said. Send it to the corn book. So Henrietta mailed it off. When the corn book review came out, it said, Henrietta, The Perils of Maxine, one dozen pages, Cider Press. Henrietta lays an egg with her first book. We hope this is her last book. The Perils of Maxine shows why chickens shouldn't ever write. It is odoriferous. Noah like odoriferous means it stinks. <laughs> End of story. Oh no. Poor chicken. Poor chicken. That made us feel something. What a connection. I'm going to keep writing, Henrietta said, but her feelings were hurt and a little voice inside her kept saying, chickens shouldn't ever write. Henrietta's heart wasn't into writing anymore. She even stopped going to the library, but her aunts missed hearing Henrietta read, so they bugged her until she went to get some books. Henrietta was embarrassed. Had the librarian seen that awful review? The children love your book. Will you read it to them? When Henrietta went into the story room, the children cheered. She read with dramatic expression. Of course, 
All the children heard was bok, 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 bok. But it didn't matter. They knew the story by heart. Today we learned that strong independent learning habits help me grow as a reader and a writer. And your independent work today is to make sure that you have a strong independent workspace that works for you. It should be comfortable, it should have plenty of light, and it should have all the materials that you need so that you don't need to interrupt your work to get them. When you're doing your independent reading today, I do want you thinking about the connections that you're making and practice writing them down either in your making connections document if you have it or in your reading notebook like I did. This helps you grow as a reader because it helps you better remember and understand what you're reading. When you're thinking about what does this text make me think of and then your brain makes connections so that you'll better remember. You're also going to continue adding to your reading log so that your teacher knows what it is that you're working on when you are working away from them at school. You can also send us your connections that you're making with your independent reading texts and we would love to share them. Mr. Kevin, can you tell our third graders how they can send us their work? Of course, just put your chicken scratch on paper and send it to TV Classroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. Or you can also mail us TV Classroom, <laughs> South 8th Street, <laughs> Washington, 9840. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. If they're not used to typing, can they hunt and peck on the keyboard? Yes, that's what I do every day. <laughs> All right, third graders, now it's time for our affirmation. This is a time in our lesson when we say positive things about ourselves before we go off to do our independent work. Today, the affirmation I want you to remind yourself is, I am a strong, independent learner. I do want you to say it out loud with me right now. Here we go. I am a strong, independent Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.